right now. And we begin with late breaking news on the southwest side where fire crews are back in a familiar territory. They are putting out a fire at an abandoned restaurant again. Jonathan Cotto live at the scene, this familiar scene, I should say, this noon. Jonathan, we understand that you were just there for reports of a fire not too long ago. So what have you been able to learn so far about this fire? That's right, David. In fact, it was just a week ago that we were here reporting to a fire that firefighters were able to contain to just an AC unit on the roof. They were able to get that fire under control then, but this time it's certainly been a challenge. Now, information is limited, but this is what we know so far. The San Antonio Fire Department did respond here shortly after 10 o'clock this morning to arrive to this abandoned location, what it used to be along John Silver's restaurant on the 2200 block of Southwest Military on the city's southwest side. That's directly across from South Park Mall. Now, we know about 18 units are on scene. Fire crews relentlessly battling not only the tremendous amounts of heavy smoke, but the flames shooting out from the roof. We had a chance to speak with fire officials who told us those 18 units have been met with a number of, of the challenges, as you can see here, not only this heavy smoke, but flames shooting from the roof. They've been battling the fire from their aerial ladders, using those aerial ladders. Now, now a week ago, investigators say this was the second fire at this exact location, making this incident the ninth fire in this area. They say the fire was more than likely caused by homeless people who stay inside the building. But of course, that is all under investigation. Now, Ursula, David, the cause of this fire is under investigation. No reports have been reported and will continue to stay on scene monitor as the firefighters continue to battle on any hot flashes from within this building reporting jonathan Cotto, case at 12 news thank you so much jonathan san antonio has an accused shooter on their hands another man at the head of a northeast side apartment 33 year old calvin williams the second person arrested in connection with the death of 31 year old gary smith Police say the other suspect drove Williams to the Oak Manor Apartments in the 2300 block of Austin Highway back on May 5th. And that's when police say Williams opened fire on Smith. The victim died at the scene. New at noon, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says a man stabbed a victim because, quote, it made him feel good. BCSO arrested him yesterday. 23-year-old Aldo Martinez Rios was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The attack happened in the 11,600 block of Hidden Trace. That's near Marbach Road and Loop 1604. Video showed the suspect walking away from the scene. Deputies accused him of stabbing a man while the victim was on a morning walk. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Happening tonight, a candlelight vigil will be held for a five-year-old who died after the car she was swept in, after the car she was in was swept away by high water after heavy rains. Five-year-old Alyssa Lehman's body was pulled from that vehicle. An adult also died and five other people were rescued. This happened off of Farm Road 1518 in Greytown Road near St. Hedwig last week. Tonight's vigil will take place at the American Legion Hall in St. Hedwig. It's from 6.30 this evening until 7 o'clock. Floresville says that they have arrested a shooting suspect. Officers accusing the man of firing a gun outside of a bar and shooting another person. Johnny Vela III, a charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Police say he and another person tried to make their way into Roper's Bar in Floresville, but they were not allowed inside. That's when officers say Vela pulled out a gun and started firing bullets. A bystander tried to take the gun away from the suspect, and that's when that man was shot in the shoulder and Vela took off. But as he was leaving, officers tell us he fired a gun again and this time shot a second victim in the wrist. Vela turned himself into the Wilson County Sheriff's Detention Office. A Westside man says he had no choice but to shoot and now San Antonio police are questioning him about the death of another man. They say that fatal shooting happened during a fight outside a home on Meadow Fire Street near Calabar Road in Timberview. As Katrina Weber reports so far, no one is facing any charges. It took officers only about a minute to reach a home in the 8200 block of Meadow Fire after getting a 911 call. But they soon learned the shooting they were there for would turn deadly and keep them there for hours investigating. They say a man who lives in that home told them he was attacked by a friend of his roommate who arrived there drunk after 3.30 this morning. Police say the man from the home pulled out a gun and initially fired warning shots at the ground. But he told them the visitor kept coming at him and he shot him during the fight. Officers tried to perform CPR, but the visitor died in the driveway. 
That's also where detectives focused their investigation. They marked off nearly a dozen pieces of evidence and collected the gun involved. Officers also took the man who pulled the trigger and witnesses in for questioning. The big question for detectives now is whether the shooting should be considered self-defense or if it perhaps was murder. And that is a question they should be able to answer once they complete their investigation. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Today, you're going to have another opportunity to learn more about the San Antonio Airport System's plans for the future. A virtual open house taking place tonight at 530. Residents can learn about the 2040 plans for the airfield, the terminal and airport access, as well as what will be built and when it will be built. It will include a presentation followed by a question and answer session. If you want to take part, you can register online at sanantonio.gov slash SAT future. Then you're going to get a Zoom link for that meeting. President Biden is ramping up pressure on Democrats to reach a compromise on his Build Back Better agenda. The White House says Democrats must be willing to make concessions on the massive spending bill and how to pay for it. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz reports the clock is ticking to get a deal done. An optimistic President Biden is signaling a compromise is within reach to pass his economic agenda. This has been declared dead on arrival from the moment I introduced it. But I think we're going to surprise them because I think people are beginning to figure out what's at stake. But a deal is you know, far from done. Sources tell ABC News the president is offering concessions on his signature spending package to try to get all Democrats on board by the end of next week. He's suggesting dropping the price tag from three and a half trillion dollars to just under two trillion. Paid family leave could be cut to four weeks from 12. And the $300 monthly child tax credit may only be extended by one year. Everyone is going to have to compromise if we're going to find that legislative sweet spot we can all get behind. Sources say the White House is also reconsidering its options for how to pay for the plan, as Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema is reportedly pushing back on corporate tax hikes. Biden insists the spending package will be paid for. The cost of the Build Back Better bill in terms of adding to the deficit is zero. Zero. To get there, the president has also suggested dropping tuition-free community college. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden telling ABC's Robin Roberts it's too soon to count it out from future bills. We're not giving up. We are not giving up. This is round one. This is year one. I'm going to keep going. The pressure is on for President Biden to notch a legislative win before he departs for Europe at the end of next week for the G7 meeting and an international climate summit. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. A chance to play, a place to grow. The YMCA of Greater San Antonio taking their mission and making it a reality for the community of Cibolo. A groundbreaking ceremony for a brand new facility at the Cibolo Sports Complex this morning. Stephen Gavassos explains why some say this is the first step toward building a better future. Well, you can see right behind me that there's still some work to go out here for the Cibolo family YMCA Miracle Field, but local leaders believe it will put the unity back into community and improve the quality of life for residents. This morning's groundbreaking ceremony signaled the start of more growth in the community. This site at the Cibolo Sports Complex will become a place families can come together and enjoy recreational fun. It's a project that's been in the works for several years. Back in 2018, residents voted to approve a half million dollar bond project that would support this new facility, but YMCA has also partially funded the facility. It's called a miracle field, which includes a baseball, football, soccer, and multi-use field. Cibolo Mayor Stosh Boyle believes the facility will not just give people a place to go and play, but a place to grow and understand the meaning of community. When you provide these these uh, types of atmospheres and amenities, then uh, it really uh, keeps the kids focused on um, on what you know community is all about. Boyle says it's just another step forward for Cibolo, which has seen more business come to the area in recent years. Now, YMCA will manage the programming for the Miracle Field, which is set to be open by January of 2022. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Still to come this half hour, the Spurs pick up a big win last night. And the youngest guy on the roster, Josh Primo, makes some history. Larry Mirrors with that. Coming up in sports. A local school district able to provide students the chance to take part in a dual language program starting in pre-K. After the break, Alicia Barrera takes a look at the benefits this program can provide.
From just two to more than 60, the San Antonio Independent School District continues to expand their dual language program across their campuses. The district says that they attribute the growth and the strength of the program to developing both languages equally and early on. Elisa Barretta has more on proven benefits the program has on bilingual students K-12. These students are biliterate, bicultural, and bilingual, but they're also scoring even higher in state regulated exams in comparison to their monolingual peers. Unlike other programs, this one at SAISD introduces English literacy from pre-K, which means they're working on both languages at the same time and early on. SAISD says this is an enrichment program that helps develop cross-curricular cognitive schools in Spanish and English. They also have a big focus on cultural awareness and why speaking two languages and learning about different cultures matters. But for students, it's about being able to bridge their two worlds at home. My grandma sometimes, she understands English, but she can't really speak it and sometimes she forgets. So I have to speak mostly Spanish with her. But I can express myself with the two languages and I can talk with people. Like if one of my classmates doesn't know English, I could talk to them with Spanish. Every year more campuses are on board, plus the SAISD board just had a vote to add the program as part of the district's policy, which means this dual language immersive program is here to stay. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, we have another guest today. That's right. Yeah. Justin ditching us again. Yeah, he's worked this morning in the nine, so he left it up to Katie. That's Blake okay. To we like carry Katie. through the day. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, glad to be here with you this afternoon. It is certainly warm and humid out there, and that's going to be the trend going forward all the way through the upcoming weekend. So we had that great fall weather last weekend. This weekend. Not so much, but our next front is within the seven day forecast. So we'll talk about that and what you can expect for the rest of the work week coming up shortly. First, the aquifer today, no change. It's holding steady at 665.7 and in your pollen count looking good today. Both molds and ragweed are low. We'll be right back. Looking outside, it's another pretty one. If it wasn't for the humidity, it'd be just about perfect. But yeah. It's not that bad. Yeah. No, it's it, not really that bad. It's not. It's, We've seen worse. That is that is very true. <laughs> um, but humidity is generally going to be pretty high over the next several days until our next significant cold front arrives. And that's very common for this time of year. And we'll talk about that front coming up. First year low temperatures this morning in and around San Antonio and Bear County, low 60s, upper 50s in the hill country and then well to the south. Um, and also in Del Rio, our low temperatures were only in the low 70s. We did have some fog. Um, patchy fog, dense fog earlier this morning. Uh, so the reason for the patchy fog, the reason for our morning lows not being quite so cool, well, that's because our dew point numbers are back up. So late last week, Friday into the weekend, they were very low behind the front that came through and now they've rebounded uh, very nicely and it's, that's been the case for the past couple days. So we've got dew points in the 60s and 70s feeling muggy, in some instances, even oppressive humidity. And all the way through early next week, the weekend and early next week, our dew points will be staying high. But look what happens by the middle of next week, Tuesday into Wednesday. That's when we expect our next front to move through and we're feeling more confident in that front arriving by the middle of next week. And that's what will drop our dew points again, get us some drier air back in here and it'll feel a lot more comfortable. Currently, it looks like we had a bird or something flying on by. We're taking a look at the airport here and 410. We've had um, more clouds roll in just over the past few hours. Temperatures across Bear County at Kelly, 80 degrees, also 80 degrees at the airport and 84 at Stinson. Generally very light, even calm winds, so there won't be much of a breeze today to help us out with this warm uh, and muggy situation we find ourselves in. It's 81 in Hondo, but you'll notice from Del Rio up into the hill country, slightly cooler mid to upper 70s. There's been a bigger batch of cloud cover out that way. It looks like it is starting to kind of fizzle out uh, and clear up a bit, but 
as you can see across the area, a good mixed bag of cloud cover. So we'll call it partly cloudy this afternoon, but keep in mind anywhere from Eagle Pass up into portions of the Western Hill Country. A few more clouds here, at least over the next few hours. Temperature wise, those of you that sit under a few more clouds today, maybe just a couple of degrees cooler, but generally mid to upper 80s low 80s across portions of the hill country and even some low 90s well to the south of highway 90 places like Catula. So it is going to be generally warm today and for the next few days all the way through the weekend high temperatures uh, will be in the upper 80s. We'll even start to approach 90 again Sunday into Monday, but then our next Good set of changes will arrive middle of next week with a front that will continue to watch the forecast trends over the next couple of days. But our forecast models out to a week are in fairly good agreement that the next front will be about the middle of next week, moving in early on Wednesday to not necessarily bring in a ton of cold air, but another good batch of that drier air that will bring our humidity down and make it feel much more comfortable out there. We'll also carry some low chances of rain Tuesday into Wednesday with the arrival of that front, but it doesn't look like we've got anything widespread in the forecast in terms of rain and uh, even lower chances this weekend for just a stray shower here or there Saturday into Sunday. Otherwise, staying warm, staying muggy, but that hopefully will change by the middle part of next week, guys. Thank you so much, Katie. Mm -hmm. Big night last night. I don't know that was big night last <laughs> night for the Spurs. <laughs> it was a big night last night for the Spurs. Seven guys in double digits, including Devin Vassell off the bench. He came up with a career best scoring night thanks to plays like this, a steal and a slam. Plus, UTSA is moving to a new conference. we got the details coming up. UTSA announced this morning that it will join the American Athletic Conference. The American's Board of Directors and Commissioner Mike Oresco approved UTSA's membership along with fellow Conference USA members Charlotte, Florida Atlantic, North Texas, Rice, and UAB. The six universities will join the nine continuing American members, East Carolina, Memphis, Navy, which is football only, South Florida, SMU, Temple, Tulane, Tulsa, and Wichita State, which is basketball and Olympic sports only, to bring the Americans' membership to 15 schools. The American will compete as a 14-team league in football and in men's and women's basketball, among other sports. Though a formal date is not yet known for the six new programs to join, the hope is they will all begin competing in the AAC at the start of the 2023 season, Sources told CBS Sports Matt Norlander and here's what UTSA President Taylor Amy said in a statement quote UTSA is on an amazing upward trajectory with a very bright future today represents a significant waypoint on that journey for our athletics program joining the American is a bold opportunity for UTSA and builds on the powerful momentum of the university we are incredibly excited about the future end quote. Spurs open their brand new season with a come for behind win against the Magic last night at the AT&T Center. The Magic led by seven in the first quarter, then the Spurs got going. Kelvin Johnson scored 15 points, Derek White 16 points with four assists. Doug McDermott, who was brought in for his shooting skills, did just that, scoring 12, and he made two of his three-point attempts. But the big dog was guard Devin Vassell. Late third quarter, he comes up with a steal, then a breakaway slam dunk. Spurs bench loving that one. Vassell scored a career-high 19 points off the bench to help the Spurs win 123-97. It's the start Devin and the Spurs wanted. For sure. Um, you know, we still had our bumps and bruises. Um, but, I mean, I think that's the energy that we want to play with. That's the team camaraderie we want to play with. Um, I think they said seven people scored in double figures. And, you know, I think that's the type of team that we have. Any given night, anybody can be our leading scorer. But it's not about that. It's about playing with, with energy, and, and that's contagious. You know, once we got out in the second half and started getting steals and turnovers, I think the whole momentum of the game changed. And, you know, we really just started feeding off that. Spurs rookie and first round draft pick Joshua Primo entered with 454 left in the fourth quarter and he made his only shot a three point attempt and the crowd and his teammates absolutely loved it. Primo is the youngest player in league history to appear in an NBA game after going to college at 18 years and 300 days old. I was a little bit nervous. Palms got a little bit sweaty. Um, but coming in there you just you know you just got to play basketball at the end of the day. So uh, when you get out there, you're guarding the ball, um, you catch the ball, you just, it's what you've done all your life, so it's, it's easy at that point. 
Spurs will play at the Denver Nuggets tomorrow night at 8. Denver beat the Suns last night in Phoenix, 110 to 98. And in USL Championship play last night, San Antonio FC lost at New Mexico 42, but SAFC secured its spot in the postseason after Austin Bold FC lost on the road to El Paso Locomotive. Primo stepped into that shot like he'd been doing it for, I don't know, yeah. 18 years. 18 years and 300 <laughs> days, right? <laughs> now he's 18 years and 301 One days. Day. Yeah, there you Getting go. close. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. The skyrocketing cost of fuel isn't just affecting cars on the road, but passengers in the air. We have details in the next half hour. A good sign for the economy. The latest unemployment numbers show signs of a rebound. We'll take a look at the latest drop after the break. Unemployment numbers are hitting a pandemic low, evidence that layoffs are declining. The Labor Department says the 290,000 Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. That is 6,000 less than the previous report. And the third straight re week we've seen a drop. It's the fewest people to apply for benefits since March 14th, 2020, when the pandemic intensified. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized booster doses of Moderna and Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccines. The FDA gave emergency youth authorization for boosters of Moderna's vaccine for people 65 and up who were fully vaccinated at least six months ago. Also eligible for boosters, those at least 18 years old who are at high risk of severe COVID-19 or have frequent exposure to the virus. The FDA added that a booster dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may be administered at least two months after the full vaccination. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's vaccine advisors will meet today to decide on whether to recommend the FDA authorization. And we're going to have more on those booster shots coming up today at 5 and 6. Meanwhile, the overall number of cases of COVID-19 falling in the U.S. It's a different story, though, in the United Kingdom. ABC's James Longman explains. The numbers are moving in the wrong direction. That is the message from the government here. Daily cases have been above 40,000 for eight days in a row. Now, it's important to say that vaccinations mean hospitalizations are way down on what they were last year. But the danger is that with so much virus circulating in the population, new variants could take over, especially with winter setting in. So why are the numbers so high? Well, masks here are not compulsory. Very few people wear them. There's a lot more mixing in big groups and very little social distancing. Most children are now back at school and there's a chance that immunity from the vaccine wanes after five or six months. There's also an increasingly big issue here, which is young people increasingly reticent to get vaccinated. The government says it does have a plan B, which it says would make masks uh, mandatory. They'd get people to work from home and they'd bring in vaccine passports. But despite all the criticism so far, they're resisting changing course. James Longman, ABC News in London. Many moms experience postpartum depression. It's also known as baby blues. It's usually a mix of depression and anxiety caused by a huge hormonal shift after giving birth. So it actually happens to a lot of people. It's just not something that we always are talking about. That was Dr. Sarah Verendonk, an assistant professor at UT Health San Antonio. She says the intense feeling of sadness is common during the first one to three weeks after a woman gives birth but it becomes a cause for concern if those feelings keep you from doing your daily tasks. That's when Dr. Varenadunk says that it's important to let somebody know what you're feeling. It's not your job to go through this alone. And so, you know, your, your obstetrician and gynecologist has been there for you for your whole pregnancy and we're here in this postpartum period. So I think number one is make sure that you're reaching out early um, and letting letting um, you know us know what's going on because it's not your job you know to deal with this alone. It in fact is ours. The doctor says the Center for Healthcare Services and the National Alliance of Mental Health of San Antonio can help. You can also find more information about postpartum depression on ksad.com. Outside with Lackey, I remember last week at this time we were, we were starting to worry about like a lot of uh, wind because you know football mm -hmm. games and kickers and yep. punters and those guys having to deal with all that. But now it's just like humidity and that's about it. Yeah, and it really our winds are going to be quite light today and for the next few days. So for tomorrow night's football games, wind definitely won't be an issue, but uh, cool, dry air won't be an issue either. <laughs> it's going to be staying 
warm and muggy. Man, I am just having all kinds of luck with our camps today. We had a bird. I don't know what's happening. There's something back there, a bug. Maybe he decided to leave. I don't know. Uh, this is, <laughs> is uh, I-10 and 410 there on the northwest side at the airport. 80 degrees, 79 Fair Oaks Ranch, also 79 in Seguin. So just a little peek at some temperatures around the area. Um, another look at our temperatures, 86 already in Pleasanton, but it's 78 up in Bulverde and 78 in Comfort. So uh, plenty warm out there, and there's also not a lack of humidity. Our dew points are in the 60s and 70s across the board, and that is pretty high, up to just shy of 80 from Del Rio down to Eagle Pass. There's been a bit more cloud cover here right along the Rio Grande and up into the western part of the hill country and essentially through the rest of the day. Uh, clouds will come and go, so we'll call it partly cloudy. It could appear mostly cloudy at times, but no chance of rain today and your temperatures for a lot of us will jump into the mid to upper 80s. We're going for a high right around 84 here in San Antonio. Some spots well south of 90 could jump into the low 90s this afternoon by 8 p.m. Temperatures falling into the upper 70s and as I mentioned, really light easterly winds today, just about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So some pretty quiet weather over the next several days, but our next front is on the seven day forecast. We'll take another look at that and get you a look at your full weather roundup coming up in just a bit. David Ursula. Thank you, Katie. The FBI now bringing in cadaver dogs, saying it will take days to process the scene where human remains were found. They also found a backpack and a notebook belonging to Brian Laundry. The discovery was made at a Florida nature preserve near a trail Brian frequented. His parents, Chris and Roberta Laundry, led investigators to the area yesterday morning. The Laundry family attorney says that Chris Laundry located a white bag lying in the woods that he gave to law enforcement, and that's when the Laundries were also notified that human remains had been found nearby. The probability is strong that it is Brian's remains, but we're going to wait until the forensic uh, results come in and, and verify. Brian's still the only person of interest in Gabby. Petito's disappearance. He returned home from their cross country road trip September 1st without Gabby. Her body was found September 19th near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. The coroner said she'd been murdered and left there for weeks. Attorney General Merrick Garland will be appearing before the House Judiciary Committee for a hearing. Lawmakers planning to grill him on the Justice Department's response to the January 6th Capitol attack. As of right now, the department has charged more than 600 people accused of taking part. During Garland's testimony, the House will be preparing uh, to approve a criminal contempt resolution for Steve Bannon. Bannon refused to cooperate in the House's January 6th insurrection investigation. So if approved, the Justice Department will have to decide whether to prosecute the former Trump advisor as well. It didn't take long for a former Texan to get a new job. Larry Ramirez with that coming up in sports. Your next plane ticket could come with a heftier price tag when you could see the start of fares going up. Southwest Airlines says its recent meltdown cost the airline $75 million. Thursday, Southwest warned investors to expect some hits to its revenue this quarter. It pointed out that the problems early this month that led to the cancellations of more than 2,000 flights, the company revenue also suffered because of the pandemic. Southwest believes it lost $100 million in sales in August alone because of the surge and $200 million in sales in September. And if you've been waiting to book your airfare for holiday travel, you're running out of time to save some money. ABC's Gio Benitez explains what you can do to make sure you get the best deal. The skyrocketing cost of fuel isn't just affecting cars on the road, but also passengers in the air. Take a look at this because United CEO Scott Kirby is saying to brace yourself to pay more for your next flight. He said yesterday higher jet fuel prices lead to higher ticket prices. United is already seeing a surge in demand for the holidays, hiring a thousand more pilots so far this year to help get more flights in the air. But that higher demand also means higher prices. And experts say they're coming fast. Industry 
analysts say come Halloween, just 10 days away, many of the deals are just gone. In fact, if you're looking to fly for Thanksgiving, you should probably be looking to book just about now. That window really is closing in on you. We spoke with Willis Orlando of Scott's Cheap Flights, and he says there are some deals still out there. Now, with airlines getting rid of cancellation and change fees, Booking now, no matter what, may be a good move because even if you're not totally sure about travel right now, you can get the tickets anyway because you can change them later. Those airline policies really are in your favor right now. And it turns out if you find the same flight at a cheaper price later on, you can still make that change too. So if prices go down because change fees are waived, you can likely take that money from the first ticket in a voucher, buy a new ticket, and then you have something left over on the side. Now here's another tip because we've seen a lot of cancellations and delays during the pandemic. So remember, if you're booking a flight, book the earliest flight possible. That way, if you have any issues with that flight, you still have some other options later in the day. Gio Benitez, ABC News at Newark Liberty International Airport. Well, he gave it away, but I was going to say, do you know how I know Gio's not at San Antonio International Airport? <laughs> He's got a jacket on. He's got like three layers of clothes on. Uh, a bit colder up there or cooler for those folks. Here's the view of our airport. We do have some fair weather clouds out there and they will come and go for the rest of your Thursday. And generally speaking, partly cloudy skies all the way through the upcoming weekend and very warm this weekend as well. A sneak peek of your Saturday and Sunday forecast highs in the mid to upper 80s and plenty of humidity to go around. Also some very slim chances of rain this weekend. We'll take a look at that and another look at your full planning forecast coming up. Well, we're not wearing jackets around here, are we? Look at that. She's even got on uh, yeah, short sleeves. Yeah, so. I was like, I was sweating earlier today. I'm like, why did I wear a long sleeve shirt? Yeah, I was searching through my closet this morning, and I, I guess maybe the advantage of my job is that I'm like, all right, we're gonna go for the uh, yeah. short sleeves because it's just it's the humidity. Yeah, that more than anything, uh, because our lows were in the 60s this morning. That's not terrible, pretty close to normal for this time of year. But yeah, the humidity, that's where it gets a little sticky and uh, just not terribly pleasant, right? Currently, a lot of us are in the 80s, starting to jump into the upper 80s south of Highway 90. And we do have some upper 70s across portions of the hill country. Dew point numbers for everyone, 60, 70. So as you've already heard me say a few times today, and as you'll continue to hear us say over the next few days, uh, it is muggy out there and that will not be changing. We don't have much of a breeze to help us out either. Our wind speeds are just about five to 10 miles per hour, but even in spots, we've got a calm wind from Fredericksburg to Kerrville, so there won't be much of a breeze to keep that warm, humid air moving around after school today as the kiddos are heading home mid to upper 80s so warm and humid this afternoon east winds 5 to 10 pretty quiet weather for you today now we have had a few more clouds develop this morning from eagle pass up to del rio portions of kinney county and then across the western portion of the hill country but that thicker cloud deck does seem to be breaking up but we've got a good mixed bag of cloud cover today some lower clouds and also a few more of those high thin clouds streaming in from the southwest. So we'll say partly cloudy into the afternoon today, but it could appear mostly cloudy at times, especially if you're well west of I-35. Now this view of radar is picking up on some very light precipitation, generally north of our hill country counties up closer to the Concho Valley. There are a few really, really light showers there, but not expecting any rain for our area. And in fact, there's actually a weak cold front that's draped across portions of central Texas. This does have some cooler air behind it and folks in North Texas into the plains are feeling a little bit of that today. Unfortunately, this front is not going to do much for us. In fact, over the next 12, 24 hours, it essentially is just going to wash out very fickle and really won't change our weather at all. As we get into tomorrow, more partly cloudy skies. Rain will not be an issue for any Friday night football games, so that is some good news. And uh, like David mentioned, we had the big time win last Friday night. 
We expect light winds tomorrow night, so I'm looking pretty good for our football game, so it will be warm and humid. As we get into the weekend with a southerly wind in place, yes, it will stay humid, but we'll also see a few stray showers develop primarily during the afternoon hours, and the best chance will be south and east of San Antonio, uh, but coverage-wise, these rain chances are going to be very low as we get into the upcoming weekend, just a stray shower Saturday into Sunday. Slightly better chances Tuesday into Wednesday with the arrival of another cold front. This one will help us out a bit more, especially with our humidity. It's looking to drop our dew points from the 70s Tuesday into the 40s by next Wednesday. So that'll bring the fall feel back to uh, to us here in South Texas. But again, that's not until the middle part of next week. And hopefully we'll be able to squeeze out a few showers as that front rolls in. For the rest of your Thursday, very quiet, generally warm and humid. Light winds out of the east stand. Very similar story over the next several days. Really, the next round of noticeable changes will be next Tuesday into Wednesday. And of course, we'll keep you updated. We'll be right back. Spurs second year guard Devin Vassell led the offense attack last night with a game high and career best 19 points off the bench. And the Spurs 123-97 season opening win at home against the Orlando Magic. Into the third quarter, Devin drops in a three-point buzzer beat her from the corner and the crowd absolutely loved it. He's expecting to have a big year for the Spurs after a unique rookie season. I feel like last year it was a it was a unique year um, and there was a lot of different challenges and stuff but you know I, I put in a lot of work over this offseason and I know that the coaches and t my teammates have a lot of faith in me so um, I know this year is going to be a big year not only for me though but for the team. The 1-0 Spurs will play at the 1-0 Denver Nuggets tomorrow night at 8. Denver beat Phoenix last night 110 to 98. Nikola Jokic led Denver with 27 points and 13 rebounds. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott was named the NFC's Offensive Player of the Week after throwing the game-winning touchdown to C.D. Lamb to beat the Patriots in New England in overtime 35-29 Sunday. His 445 yards passing was the most ever allowed by a Bill Belichick coach Patriots team and the Houston Texans will try and snap out of a five game losing streak when they face the only undefeated team left in the NFL the Arizona Cardinals this Sunday and they'll have to do it with rookie quarterback Davis Mills as their starting QB Tyrod Taylor who injured his hamstring in the second game of the season was not on the field yesterday when the Texans returned for practice and head coach David Coley telling us Mills will start but Davis admits he's never lost five games in a row in football piecing it all together. It's, it's tough to win football games in the NFL. Every week's a challenge, and unfortunately we've, I mean, like you said, lost five in a row at this point, and we're just kind of going at it with the mindset of attacking attacking each week like we're trying to go 1-0. One on, one Looks like Whitney Merciless got out just in time. The Texans veteran defensive lineman was signed by the Green Bay Packers, who are 5-1, and one, not 1-5. One and five. The Houston Astros were all smiles in the sixth inning of the American League Championship Series last night because that's when they broke the game open at Boston with five runs. They expanded their one nothing lead to six zip, which was just too much for the Red Sox to overcome. Jordan Alvarez had three runs batted in, as did Yuli Gurriel to help the Astros win 9-1 to to take a 3-2 series lead, heading back to Houston for game six and seven if necessary. You can feel confident all you want to with those guys over there, you know, taking the, the you know, the last breath and the final uh, um, uh, life out of out of anything is, you know, it's a tough uh, rogues. They're going to fight you to the end. So it's just a yeah, I mean, I feel good, and I but I don't feel great. It's amazing. Game six is tomorrow night at 708. Red Sox at the Astros and in the NLCS. The Braves crushed the Dodgers 9-2 last night, taking a 3-1 series lead. Game five is tonight, 708 in LA. A lot of runs being scored. Lots of runs. Both series. Yeah. yeah. I think the fans probably like that. Makes that exciting. All right, we're gonna head over to SA Live. Yeah, it's Ladies Day. Ladies Day. Oh, yes, and, and we're match. matching. Yeah. And this was not that. planned, well, I promise. You know, you and Mike <laughs> always planned to match, so I wanted to match today. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> that. We have a sweet show for you today. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, Alexis Galadriel with Galadriel's Goods is here, and we are excited about that. And you're making this beautiful donut cake, but apple we had cider. Ap apple cider donut cake. <laughs> get yeah. it right, I smell that. But you have a great tip on how to get that dense flavor, right? Oh, yeah. Want some density? 
More flour, less liquid. Got it. Yeah, easy to remember, right? Yes. Awesome. And speaking of fall, I know it doesn't feel like it today, but if you would like to spice up your area, whether it's your backyard or your porch, we have some tips today from a landscaping expert on how you can do just that. And it's fun, local Halloween events and crafts you can take part in thanks to the San Antonio Public Library. So we're gonna be doing some fun crafts with them that you can do with the kids and be talking about kind of the popular books that you can read yes. this season. Yeah, the spooky ones. I always love the smell, right? The <laughs> library books. And we also want to know, did you see the San Antonio edition of the Monopoly? Mm -hmm. Did you pick something that made it on the list? Um, yes. And some of those pieces are really fun too. We'll talk about all that and more coming up on SA Live.